recording, recording. All right. All right, we're we're here. Welcome to another episode of, uh, or another chapter of Vim. (laughs) (laughs) Great start, mate. Oh, yeah, well, you know. (laughs) I'm a little sluggish this morning. I didn't use my sex toy. (laughs) You didn't? How could you stop yourself? Oh, my gosh. Well, it was too hot. (laughs) (laughs) Wait, the weather or the sex toy? Uh, Both. (laughs) We were blowing fuses. (laughs) Oh my god! How oh my lord, Chris. Uh, you know what? Uh, pretty good. I, I'd say very okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very okay. Very okay. I love the Kim Jong Un shirt. Yeah, that, that's pretty popping, man. Can well, we get, look at that shirt. Yeah, of course. I mean, like, check it out. Look at that. All around. Rocket man. Yeah. Yeah. He's inspiring. <laughs> I mean, he's such an explosive figure in the world. <laughs> you know, <laughs> literally. <laughs> you know? Kaboom. Yeah. It's like uh, his, his ideas are radioactive, and I just right. don't know how to deal with them. Yeah. <laughs> it's like I need to, um, you know, seclude them. Oh, <laughs> kinda, well. Kind of keep them separate from the world. Right. I, I, yeah. Well, that's a great looking shirt. Uh, thank you very much. How are you doing tonight? Good, man. Yeah. Good. Yeah. I, I spent the last two days on the beach, yeah. um, and it's just nice to be able to swim again and to be in the sun and oh. just, just free. It's, it's, it's so yeah, nice. Yeah. I uh, spent the time in my garden. Uh, yeah, I grew a bunch of lettuce and spinach this year, and it's just mega big, you Great. know. So yeah, so I harvested it all out of the garden uh, the other day, and and then today I did my tomatoes. So my row of my tomatoes are coming out. And uh-huh. It's just like yeah, you know, my little secret garden. So. What are you are you cooking anything with it? Oh yeah, man, I, I make all kinds of dishes. Yeah, I, I, you know, my tomatoes go into my eggs in the morning, and I make uh, tomato. Um, sauce with it so yeah yeah i love my tomatoes and my lettuce you'll have to you have to give it to me sometime yeah I, i'd love to try your tomato sauce <laughs> <laughs> just like just like put it in around my mouth just, i just i can't wait to be filled up with all the all your vegetables i'm still I, stuck on the sex toy <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'll explain this to everyone. <laughs> we were talking about sharing a sex toy yeah. uh, before the show started and uh, the things we talk uh, about, right? Just uh, just, just so we're clear, uh, not sharing a sex toy before the show started, but like the conversation. The was, conversation yeah, 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 was yeah, about right. sex toys. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the sharing the sex toys after. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, so explain to them the dilemma. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, um, so my dear buddy uh, TJ, he, um, yeah, we were talking about it again. This, uh, yeah, TJ, 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 man, <laughs> TJ is our man. And <laughs> um, the so, so he's our live cutter. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was talking to him how I, I was feeling a bit frustrated with the whole uh, dating in Vancouver. Okay, and then he recommended. <laughs> Yeah, it went COVID on it, did it? Well, yeah, it, went, it, it was COVID beforehand. It, it seems it seems to be the city to love to ghost. It's just the thing. Uh, either that, or I'm just you know bottom of the barrel where ghosting is is worthy. Um, and then he recommended that I pick up this sex toy. Um, right. It's uh, it's essentially a sleeve for your penis. Um, it's it's like the equivalent of a vibrator, right? Once you get like you know, women say like once we get this, we don't yeah, need a man it, again. Is it like a prophylactic? Uh, what, what, what? No, no, it's, it's just like it's just it's just this rubber thing that you just wrap around your willy. Oh, uh, okay. and it's it's nice and heavy, uh, and it's got a whole bunch of modes on it. It vibrates, uh, wow. so you got ten different vibrating styles. Oh wow! Um, and because it's made of rubber, I, I figured you know <laughs> you can mix and match. Uh, and then so I don't know why so, Mattel just came in my head. <laughs> <laughs> just, uh, just, G.I. Joe with it's, Kung Fu Grip. I don't well, know it, you know, it's, it's the toy the entire family can enjoy. <laughs> Slinky. <laughs> oh, oh, my gosh. Do we um, need to go any further with this? Uh, well, I, I mean, we're about to. Um, yeah. So now so, what was the dilemma with okay, this Okay. So so I got that, and I, was, and I was telling him about it, rave reviews. I even told another one of my friends, and he bought one too. Right. Then TJ for some reason decided to buy a different set. <laughs> he recommended me one. He said it was good. Right. I loved it. Right. A friend of mine bought it, loved it. And then he went off and bought a different one <laughs> just, oh. for, just for happen, uh, like, I don't know, happenstance, I guess. Right. Um, and then he wasn't, he wasn't so pleased with it. Right. So, um, <laughs> so I, t- I told him, hey, like, do you want to try my one out if you don't want to buy it? Okay. You know, it's, it's clean. Like after using, you, you sanitize it and it's, right. you know, it's all clean. Right. So I didn't think there'd be any issue with sharing a sex toy because it's clean. <laughs> well, this is in 1972, man. Come on now. Yeah, 1972, <laughs> you know, STIs were rampant. Now there's nothing going on. 
and also COVID, like you you know nothing's happening, so so really it's not going to be dirty. It's just going to have a bit of extra protein sometimes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh God. Yeah, but I don't see the pro- uh, the problem in sharing a sex toy with a buddy. Oh, okay. Is is there one? Well, uh, I'm 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 lost for words. <laughs> I'm just got this picture in my head. I can't get out. Just, Do you want to paint it for me? Oh, this. <laughs> I'm gonna chime in and say there definitely is a problem. <laughs> well, okay. What's the problem? I feel so dirty. <laughs> I, I, I need Mr. Bubble. <laughs> Well, what does Mr. Bubble do? He cleans you in with no trouble. Exactly. Mr. Bubble. If, if, if Mr. Bubble's good enough to clean you, it should be clean enough. It should be good enough to clean the sex toy. Oh, okay. You know? Okay. If you can shake hands with a man, you can, <laughs> you can shake something. Asmat is right outside here right now to take you away. <laughs> it's my rebellion against COVID. Oh, I may not man. cough into somebody, but I'll cough into something and share that. Oh, goodness, man. So, so how was your week after all of this? Is uh, culminated with yeah. What, what, how was your week? Oh man, my week, my week's been good. Yeah. Um, cause I knew I knew I was gonna give myself the weekend off right. and have the beach. Right. So I wasn't looking at the beautiful weather and feeling miserable that I was gonna be stuck inside the studio all day. Right. right. Um. So it became really productive. Yeah. I uh, I was recharging my batteries by by you know we, I spent some time with you. Right. I spent some time with TJ with Guy. Um. You know, uh, working on this podcast. I, I did a bit of writing. Okay. I started doing a play reading actually. Oh. Uh, with a friend of mine in Toronto. What are you, what are you, what are you reading? What are you writing? Uh, Harold Pinter's uh, The Dumb Waiter. It's from the fifties. Okay. Um. And what we're doing is. Um, over over Bluetooth uh, okay. or over the phone or Zoom. Right. Uh, what we're doing is just doing a reading, and and we're working on the characters separately. Uh, the, it's a, it's a one act play, about twenty two, twenty three pages. Okay. Um, two characters, um, and so we're just basing off one. You know, just just working with it separately. Wow. And every so often dealing with it, and then if we're ever in the same city at the same time, we've already technically rehearsed it. So we could just put it up anywhere we are. Right. So if it comes down here for a bit, or if I go there, or if we go to England, if we go to Australia, right. we have this piece ready to go. And all we need is just a location. And, and the great thing about that is um, it's, it's, it's going to be fresh all the time because yes. we're not actually dealing with one another. Uh, and, and so when it, whenever we're in the same room at the same time and actually putting it on, it's it's not robotic. Right. We we haven't practiced any motions. It's just we we know who the characters are. Right. We know our relationship and we know the place. Yeah. And so we're able to just play. So it's like improvisation, basically. Technically, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, we, and, but within the structure of the play. Oh, so great. so that was that's 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 been really fulfilling. Just being working on that. Oh, that sounds interesting, man. Uh, is is are you acting something that you aspire to be or do or or theater? Or? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, uh, it's, it's been something I've been pursuing for over half my life now. Well, see, I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. We sat up here the last time. I don't think we covered that about you. No. And uh, so, yeah, talk a little bit more about that. Uh, where did the, the aspiration to become a theater thespian? A thespian of sorts, yes. Thespian of sorts. An uh, impressionist of sorts. Yes. Yeah. Do you remember your first uh, thing you ever did? Ah uh, yeah, uh, it was for. Um, I mean, first professional thing was uh, I was about thirteen. I uh, did a did a commercial for the NRMA, okay. which is an insurance company in Australia. Okay. Um, uh, it's the idea is that uh, electricity goes out in a, in a certain uh, community. Yes. And uh, the the NRMA, the insurance guys, like just going through town and just like checking all the areas, and it's like it's like. It's strange because everyone loves the insurance person. <coughs> they see him like, oh, it's him. They wave into him playing around. <laughs> right. Um, you will barely see me in the thing because right. we're playing cricket okay. in, in the front yard. Okay. And uh, being the guy I am, I am just dropping f bombs like crazy. <laughs> and so, like, even even whenever the <laughs> I saw a bit. <laughs> I was at 13 years old and I'm just like swearing like crazy. Yeah. I'm like smoking cigarettes off break. I'm like, I'm like typical, typical. You know, wayward actor. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, oh, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah. Can't get a break? Cause, well, because of me, like <laughs> these poor kids who are like uh, opposite me, right. <laughs> they're not on TV because every single time it's on us, there's just like, it's just coming off my face. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So they had to yeah. cut it out. Oh, <laughs> Still got paid for it though. Now, where was this at? Where, where did this all Sydney, take Sydney, Australia. Australia. Yeah, Sydney. Yeah, yeah Sydney. 
Yeah, I heard about Sydney in the news last night. What was wrong with Sydney? Oh, the outbreak, Melbourne. the COVID outbreak, of course. <laughs> well, no, Mel- Melbourne's the one that's got it. Sydney's just concerned it might come back to them. Yeah. Melbourne's back in lockdowns. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We're all getting ready to go back into the bubble. Yeah? Yeah, I kind of figure that. You know, we're, the second wave is coming, so you know, just preparing, you know, and let people know. You know, put your nuts away and get ready to hunker down again and share your vibrator. Are you going to be... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> share vibrators. Well, hopefully the summit's planned and you can actually have a partner for quarantining with. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's always nice. I've, I've already got my partner. So, oh, yeah. lucky you. Yeah, yeah. She's, she's good. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I clearly don't. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you got to get rid of that toy, but uh, well, you well, stop sharing. Well, do, do you mind if I use this platform to uh, reach out? To reach out. Go ahead. Um, to anyone of any sort, <laughs> just if, if if you think you can handle this, if you have the patience for this, please. I'm desperate and lonely. <laughs> just, 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 <laughs> that ends this chapter. <laughs> I've got no standards. I've got no respect to oh, for myself. God. That is. <laughs> I got nothing. <laughs> so yeah, okay. Back to you. Back to you. Yeah, I, I want to talk more about your your thespian aspirations. Please, yeah. Um, who's one of the idols in in theater that you idolize today? Brando. You like. Brando. Marlon Brando. Marlon Brando. Yeah, I grew up on Marlon Brando, uh, Al Pacino, and yeah. in terms of Australians, wow. uh, Jeffrey Rush. Wow. Yeah. Marlon Brando. Yeah. Yeah, Brando, a, he's a man. He's, he's, he's a beast. I, I actually moved to New York um, so I can study at Stella Adler, where he n- originally studied. Right. He lived with her in, in the old days, so I, I grew up on the history of that, uh, or grew up. <laughs> yeah, he's, 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 man, I'm a Brando boy. I tell you, I, I go from The Godfather to... Uh, uh, streetcar named Desire, um, yeah, on the waterfront. On the waterfront, yeah. that's that's that's, that's like my that, thing, that, man. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, see, on I'm, the waterfront, Viva I'm, Zapata, man. Yeah, yeah, that heartbreaking films. Yeah, Stella, <laughs> hey Stella, 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 <laughs> <laughs> Brando. Yeah, that's interesting now. Yeah. So, what do you what do you take from Brando? What 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 what, what inspires you to when you are out there? Uh, what what uh, you know? Did you kind of get from studying Brando. From studying Brando. Oh, damn. That's. Uh, I mean, I actually I know the answer. Just it's just kind of coming up with the words. Um, <laughs> he didn't play it safe. No. Uh, there's this. There's something so magnetic about him. He's he's got this animal instinct inside of him. Uh, he's natural. He's raw. He's not afraid to take risks. No. He's um, not. And 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 in current climate where everyone's afraid to say anything yeah. because they're afraid of what the perception is going to be. Right. Um, you, you look at the actors that come, came before Brando around the same time. Yeah. Primarily, you look at, say, Cary Grant. Yeah. Terrible actor. Yeah. But, you know, he, he was white and he was able to just say the lines as he said it and he was able to fit the mold no matter what they put him in. Jyoti, jyoti, jyoti. Yeah. <laughs> like, like... Well done. Yeah. Did you just learn those lines? Like, it's just, like, it's just he's just he's just kind of he's just a pretty face. Yeah. Right. And but but oh, he's, he's dynamic too. He, he um, yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I, I personally disagree. I, well, like, I mean, it, 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 that, that that form of acting and that style of acting of his at that time. I mean, it, it, there wasn't really much emotional uh, intake or output that goes into <laughs> it. It was just kind of a straight man kind of thing. Yeah. And. You know, he was a, uh, a leading man, but, you know, it, that was a different form of style of uh, uh, theatrics, of, of acting in, in, uh, in those days. Yeah. Uh, you didn't see too many men cry or have emotion or, you know, it was pretty straight up. Just have down. the stiff upper lip. Yeah, and the stiff upper lip and, you know, yeah. Oh, you know, what's out? Yes. You, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, but when you got to Brando, there was, there was raw emotion there. There yeah. was... Uh, there was no compromise, and uh, I, I remember reading a bit about how difficult he was at times because he, you know, he did what he wanted to do in yeah. the way he perceived things. And sometimes when you have a director that doesn't agree with that, you know, that comes the conflict. But nonetheless, the end result was 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 Oscar winning. Was, it's it's was, incredible. There's so much humanity in the man. Yes. You you look at something like uh, on the waterfront specifically. Yep. Uh, that came in the era where uh, the group me. theater was torn apart. Right. Because of what uh, Ilya Kazan did. 
Right. Um, you know, uh, was it the, the House of Un-American uh, Commission? Right. Um, he came out against a, a lot of the people in the group theater right. and, and, and labeled them as Reds. Yeah. Um, and and n- if he didn't do it, then his own career was would have been gone. And the people that he named were actually people who openly said that they were communists. So it's not right. necessarily... It's, it's just during like the that McCarthy great, era, right? During McCarthy era, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so, so Brando had a lot of this uh, frustration and, and hurt towards uh, Kazan well, because... Yeah. He went against his own friends. Yes. But he also understands why he did it yeah. because in terms of career, it makes sense. Yeah. And well, then, and then, and then, and then, he, uh, then they're making this film where it's the labor union beating on the, the little guys, yeah. which is like kind of the same battle that happened then. Yeah. And so he's now able to tell that story through yeah. the person who he feels yeah. was the labor head. Right. But it's, it's just this, this complex if situation. The, if you haven't seen the film, ladies and gentlemen, check it out. It's, it's, a, it's a diehard classic. It's mm. on the waterfront. It's, it's yeah, it's, it's deep. And yeah, the, 1954. Yeah. You know, Martin Brando had a, um, a way of just gently doing things that, you know, were really just typical of humanistic qualities of, of raw emotion. And, and, and he did it through just his eyes. He would do it in subtleties of just movement uh, or phrasing. Phrasing was where I, you know, especially like, you know, for instance, The Godfather. You know, uh, yeah. I'm going to tell you about, you know, one day I may call upon you and, you know. Yeah, so, I mean, it, this guy was just, he was amazing. So who else, who else in the entourage of your process of growth that you've uh, brought into your fold as act as an actor what, who al else? al pacino al pacino okay yeah al al what? pacino uh de niro yeah um i guess uh if we're gonna go modern we would say bale yeah dicaprio um i'm a, I'm a big fan of ruffalo and yeah. and and rockwell okay um who else I love watching Russell work and Mel Gibson. Yeah. Big fan. Are you? Uh, yeah, I love him. Oh, the lights are going. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> well, you know, when you, bring, when you talk about the son of Jesus. Well, <laughs> son of man. <laughs> son of man. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. yeah. Mel's been off the grid, though, lately. What happened to Mel? Um, y- y- you know, all those controversies. <laughs> You know, <laughs> too many dreams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> um, too much in the well. You know, it, it's it's what happens when you um, just have have specific views and and maybe they're not well thought out and yeah. <laughs> and you know have a combination of anger, frustration, and drugs and alcohol. <laughs> well, but uh, but I mean, whenever I'm thinking about Mel, I'm uh, I, I kind of you know I, I grew up on Lethal Weapon. Yeah, uh, I grew up on Mad Max. Hacksaw Ridge was one of the finest films I've seen in the past decade. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, that, that's what I'm kind of that's what I'm kind of more pointing towards. Right, right. So now, where are you now with your career? How are things setting with you in your career and your aspirations to being on stage? Oh, I'm in I'm in a weird place, honestly, right. a very weird place. Uh, Talk since, about that, please. Well, since mm-hmm. moving to Canada, um, I started getting a lot more opportunities for auditioning. Okay, um, which is great because uh, previously in Australia, like big productions just weren't hiring this apparently yeah. either that or I just wasn't knocking on the right doors. Right. Um, so a lot of the work that I did get was, uh, through people I'd worked with previously. So I had a, I have a wonderful reputation with, uh, writers, directors and other actors that I've worked with and producers. Right. So they just keep bringing me in for work or recommending me to other people, right. which is wonderful. Um, and, um, one of the projects, uh, was like, uh, that we did, uh, the director got me back for another thing. Okay. We ended up winning an award out of, uh, we, we swept these, uh, the, uh, this short film festival right. in New York, right. which was great. So like I've got a, technically I've got a best actor award on my belt. What are the uh, challenges of, 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 of acting, uh, of auditioning? Uh, can you talk about that a little bit about some of the challenges that you face? Um, yeah. Whether it be the color of your skin or the role wasn't good enough for you or big enough for you or you just didn't fit them. How do you handle those kind of uh, objections that sometimes hit us as? Um, so a couple ways. Um, one of the ways, look, it's really hard to say that you're not going to get a role because of the color of your skin or right. because the role's not good enough because you, you, it's, it's one of those things that if you don't have the answer to it, how the hell are you even capable of stating that this is a fact. Yeah. I, I, I personally, I'm not going to even try to go down that rabbit hole, but all, I felt that I felt disillusioned by it all. Yes. And 
And how did you cope with that? I, I started writing. Okay. I, I started focusing on that. I started writing a novel, then I started writing a couple of scripts. Right. Um, and by working with Guy, we started producing things and like learning how to do everything with the camera, learning how to edit. We're now making a podcast. Yes. Uh, we're, 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 we're in the midst of creating a story so that way we can start filming that and, yeah. and start you know making a film. That's wonderful. With, you know, um, I've got a couple of buddies who want to do some shorts together, so we might just make some skits. Right. I just so you keep I, yourself busy. You have a backup plan with well, everything see, you do here. When it comes, it's to not. That. I wouldn't even call it a backup plan because when I called myself an actor primarily, right, I was almost a victim to consequence and to other people's creativity. But I, I've just changed those uh, the words around, and mm. now I'm calling myself a storyteller or an artist. Okay. So I'm still doing the exact same thing. Wow. I'm still telling stories. I'm just finding other methods in which I can tell that story because I'm not, I'm not, I'm not hell bent on wondering what's right. I, I'm, I'm not going to fit myself into a mold that that other people have perceived, and then I'm trying to guess what that perception is and fit myself within that. Fuck that. Right. I'm right. just, I'm, I just don't have the patience. Okay. I, I don't want to, I don't want to fight for scraps. I'd rather get nothing because I've had nothing. Yes. And if I have an opportunity to build something, I'm going to do that. Yes. If I can tell a story that I want to tell, great. If I'm not telling a story that I want to tell then I'm not telling it anyway. So like, right. what have I lost? Right, right. So with that being said now, how do you approach each set or each call that you go out on? How do you approach things now in life? How has, how has this changed you or made you? Um, I've begun to value my time and my life a lot more. Yes. Um, so I'm not just jumping onto anything that I think um, is going to give me credit because you know I'm not I'm not I'm not basing my experiences on the credit I'm basing my experience on what I can take from that is it a character that I can learn something from is it a set where I could uh hover around people and learn from them right. uh is it a set that I could uh recruit and uh, and and gain some resources not in terms of just knowledge but also in terms of finding people that I can collaborate with okay is it has to be fulfilling experience before that I thought just being on a film was good enough but it's not no I need to care about what I'm doing and I need to enjoy working with the people that's what's going to bring the authentic uh, performances out mm -hmm. and by stepping away from just being primarily in front of the camera I'm learning how important it is to be behind the camera and, and how you really really like an actor's job isn't the most important um because you might be there for eight ten hours on set mm -hmm. but the grip the lighting they've been there for you know two or three hours before you and they're going to be there for hours after you they're also going to lug that shit home and mm -hmm. they're also going to have to unpack everything the director the producer the writer they've been working on this for months and then you have they have to sit down with the editor and then and then just form this story that they're already trying to tell and trying to find different methods for it right the it's, it's taken so much stress off me mm -hmm. as an actor. I now know that I come in there and, and it's not as if I'm going to be saving this production. It's not as if this audition I'm doing is, it has to be perfect. Right. It's, do I understand who this character is? And I'm going to portray it the best way possible. And that's allowed me to be so much more relaxed, which is making my performances so much more authentic. Yeah. What do you think about Vancouver? <clears throat> what do I think about Vancouver uh, as a city for for acting or yes, like as yes. people in general? Yeah, just acting. We'll go to the people later. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, from what I've seen, it seems like it's a, it's the uh, the working actors city. Yes, uh, it's 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 the film industry city. Everyone's no one's big, no one's small. Yeah, everyone just is. It's yeah. like it's it's. It's the equivalent of, say, uh, the, the mining towns, right? Everyone right. kind of works for that one mine. Yeah. Everyone yeah, works yeah. for the same films. Like, no one's, no one's better than anyone else. Everyone's just like, it's just their job. Yeah. How's COVID changed uh, things and the way you do things with that being known about us being a city of, in, in the acting and theater and that? Uh, yeah. yeah. Just in general. Uh, what, what do you think that, how that works with what's going on now as far as auditioning and, and uh, finding a niche here. Mm. Um, I, I, I kind of like it, honestly. Yeah. Because um, now you, you can audition with in the confines of your own home. Oh, okay. Um, so you're not going into these casting. Because like, cause acting is one thing. And auditioning. Right. <laughs> completely different monster. It is. <laughs> it's it's you, like... Someone should teach how to how to audition in school yeah, as like yeah. as a three four year course like instead of teaching you how to act because acting is easy compared to auditioning yeah because you, you know when you're acting you're you're on set with you know the room looks like the room right 
the person you're speaking to knows what they're saying and then you have relate uh, you're just being um but in auditioning you wait in line with a whole bunch of people that look like you <laughs> sometimes a bit more better looking sometimes less yeah sometimes taller sometimes shorter you know like all variations of you right. so you sit while you're waiting you feel like less of a person first off yeah then you go into a room and there's a whole bunch of people who are just looking at a screen and not you barely even speaking to you yeah and then they're like please <laughs> put your heart on the table <laughs> Yeah, that's it's just true. as easy as that. Yes, which is which is very confronting. And then you get somebody speaking to you, opposite, and they're just literally reading the lines in the most monotonous way possible. Yeah. and you're like, and the people that are there, they've heard their lines about forty thousand yeah. times. They're about sick of it yeah. by about three o'clock in the afternoon. They want to get out. Exactly, you know? exactly. You know, whether it's before lunch or after lunch, yeah. and then and the people who are watching you who are deciding whether or not you're good enough to be in the film, yeah. aren't even the people who are creating the film. No. They're like... They're the broker. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I mean, good for them for having made that industry for themselves. Yeah. But man, yeah. I, I, from an actor's perspective, it's so... I don't know. It, it, it rubs me the wrong way because you need to build up these relationships with the people. So it's not based on the work you do. It's, it's about the politics of how many hands you can shake. Yeah. So now here, here's the challenge. With COVID now, how is all of this being prescribed or put out there how are we auditioning for these roles -tapes. anymore you're doing self-tapes um and the, is that a fair thing to do i, I mean I, I personally think so because at least then you don't have time to uh harbor this relationship with the person the, uh, the, your relationship is based on the work you've done yeah um you you uh, you might have these zoom meetings where they just put you in and then you're doing a live audition right that's great right but you're not hanging around the office they're not seeing you in person. So in, in some way, it, but what it, about it, the it personal experience? What about that personal connection of, of seeing that person in front of you versus seeing the person on the How screen? How many people do you know in your life that don't actually do much, but are well liked because in person they know how to talk? Yeah. Right. So in, in, in this, in this field, I don't think the schmoozing should be as important as the craft. Right. And maybe in, in, in the city where you're getting, you're doing so much work maybe the schmoozing is important so that way you can you know work your way up the ladder right. but to me that feels like it's a corporate structure right and i'm i chose to be an artist i, I come for the shrimp I really you go you go for the shrimp <laughs> yeah i what, come for the shrimp yeah do you dip it in anything <laughs> or just have a fresh <laughs> i just i just, I, I just, I just I want to know dip. if you're there for the tape or if you like you know if, if she stands next to me i'm double dipping <laughs> <laughs> just looking at me like pre-covid anyway right? yeah. let's, let's be let's be clear about oh, that there you go <laughs> Yeah, put a condom on it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do that. Anyway, <laughs> you were making a point. <laughs> oh, oh lordy, lordy, lordy. Yeah, yeah, the schmooze fest. Yeah, yeah. Um, some so, people like it, and 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 that's more power to them. Right. Um, I'm not interested in schmoozing. No. I, I don't. I don't want to play the game. I don't want to do any of that. Um, if I could. I would avoid all of society for right. as long as possible and then come into work and, and have this character uh, set up. Right. And, I, and, and, and in my twisted mind, I feel like if, if more people thought that way, right. we would have an entire society of actors that are just like Daniel Day-Lewis caliber. Right. You know, it's, right. it's, it's not about the perception of, of you being in this film. It's not about um, how many people know you. It's about how good you actually are. Right. Not because it's your friend, but because the work stands for itself. And I think... Now that we're moving more towards self tapes, my hope is that that the work is going to stand out a lot more. Right. Because before this, people were saying, uh, you know, there was murmurs, so um, so I can't say for sure, but um, that say two people went in for an audition, um, and you know, one of them is clearly really talented, and the other one's not so much. But right. the one who's not so much has X amount of influences. Right. Uh, sorry, it is an influence has X amount of followers. They're more than likely to go with that person. Now, it seems kind of, you know, rude to do that. However, the role wouldn't be that big, so it's not as if it's going to be that... It's not going to hinder the production. Right. And what it's going to offer the production is a marketing push because that's free advertisement. Okay. Now, whether or not that's true, I don't know, but I've had enough people tell me from many different circles that it, even if it's a rumor, it, it, it seems like it, there might be some truth to it. Um, so... So I'm hoping we can at least move away from that. Yes. So do you see this being um, uh, a positive trend with the way these auditions, <clears throat> excuse me, are now being done? Um, is it a, you know, is it fair system of what they've put together? I mean, you know, 
looking at them on screen versus having them in the, in the, in the studio, right? Then they can make that kind of personal assessment. Which, which side do you see is the better? I, I see at home. Really? Hands down. Because when you're in the room, they're putting you on screen anyway. Yeah. So it doesn't really matter. The difference is you can at least do it within the safety of your own house. Yeah. So that way you're not going to sit there and compare yourself to other people. You're not going to allow your inse insecurities to unfold. You're not going to watch these people who are emotionless because... Yeah. Quite frankly, they're looking at a screen and not you. Right. Um, is it a fair process? Uh, as in putting it in, 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 in your house? Yeah. I think so. Yeah. I think so. For me, personally, I think it is. Okay. Um, I know there are, I've got some friends who like the experience of going in office. Yes. Cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. But not for me. No? Nah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, because... I, you know, because then I can actually focus on the work because, you know, I'm not going to trip myself up uh, right. for being nervous because when you're on set, that the nervous is one thing. Yeah. But the environment and the people you're working with quell it. Mm. When you're in an environment where these people, their job is just to make sure that they capture it well. Right. It doesn't, it doesn't work. Or maybe it doesn't work for me. Maybe, maybe I'm just, I'm, maybe I'm unlikable. Right. And they just, or maybe I'm, I'm going for such low form roles that they don't feel like they need to offer the time or maybe I don't have a good enough relationship with them. Right. Who knows? But mm. I haven't experienced that. Right. And that was in Melbourne, in Sydney, in, in, in Australia. Yeah. Uh, so, and in Australia, not those, not just Sydney, <laughs> Melbourne. Sydney, Australia. Yeah, yeah, si yeah si so Sydney, Melbourne and Vancouver. Mm. Talk about um, your, your family life, the influences. The, who was your biggest influence in your family as you grew up? No one. No one? No. Wait, what, did you grow under a rock? What? No, 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 no. Um, well, I, I, for the long time, for the longest time, I was the middle child. Okay. So, you know, my elder brother was off working with dad. Right. My younger brother was, you know. How do the folks like the acting thing? Are they? How do they like it? Yeah. They're just glad I'm not on drugs. <laughs> like. <laughs> but you are sharing used vibrators. Yeah. That's that's fine. That's fine. At, le at least the, the the positive of that is, you know, they're like Elise is not getting any diseases. Well, you know, you he's not he's not with any unseemly folks. Well, COVID seems to be the big thing nowadays. Right? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> COVID's beating everything. Yeah. <laughs> got a cold, so what? I got COVID. Glad I. Got <laughs> yeah. No. Oh my goodness. So yeah. So you you have how many brothers and sisters in the fam? Uh, so now I have three brothers. Okay. So one elder, two younger. Wow. The youngest is 15. Yeah. As of like two weeks ago. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. My son's 15. Wow. Yeah. Time goes. Bro. Yeah. They're, and they're about the same height too. Yeah. Yeah. Man. Yeah. yeah. If only I was born a decade later, I would have been about, I don't know, a foot or two taller. <laughs> Like, it's, it just seems like they're going taller and taller. Oh, man. Yeah. So talk about some other things that you like to do as well. Uh, you're reading, obviously. Yeah. What are you reading right now? Um, so right now I am, I'm reading a comedy book, actually. Yeah. Uh, it's, I can't remember the author's name, uh, but it, it's just, my old boss gave it to me. It's apparently a 15, 20 year old book. Right. Uh, and it just gives you a step-by-step -step guide into comedy writing. And oh, I thought wow. that might be an interesting thing to uh, take up because um, yeah. I, I, I go through that and a whole bunch of audiobooks, yeah. and and I've been reading some other fiction for a while. But I thought I just comedy, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just because what uh, is it about comedy? People, uh, you know, they're less critical. It's um, <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I want to learn to uh, to film something, right? Um, whether that's uh, Have as you a producer ever or director. Done comedy on stage? Or yeah, I did comedy. I did yeah. I did absurd comedy. Did you? Um, Actually, did I do any straight comedy? Oh, I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah I did. I did. Yeah. I, had to, I was a 1970s cop. I had yep. a big old mutton chop and like the handlebar mustache coming down the fro. It's tough <laughs> to be funny, isn't it? It is. It is. Um, only if you're trying to, to come be funny. across funny. Yeah. 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 yeah but if, uh, but it, you know, you have to just find the the funny moments in life, and that's right. what kind of come. Uh, that, that's what's a lot more appealing, and that's what I kind of want to portray. Um, actually, guy was telling me that if you do a straight up drama, no matter how good it is, right. everyone's a critic. Right. 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 If you do a comedy, it could be the worst thing ever. Yeah. Someone somewhere will laugh. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. So I thought, yeah. Let them stalk you, yes. Let them stalk me. <laughs> let them stalk. I have a rubber device to make myself feel at home. Stalk me, please. <laughs> just, <laughs> just please. <laughs> Take my, oh God. <laughs> 
<laughs> Hi, everyone. If you're yeah. just joining us, yeah. we're here with my man, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, oh, gosh, how much fun. Uh, this is Vim, Vancouver Entertainment Magazine. Oh, yeah, it is. Yes, it is. <laughs> and uh, I'm your host, EJ Love, and uh, we're having a great time today. It's hot outside. It is. It is really hot yeah. outside. It is hot. It's time for a beer. It is, isn't it? It's about that time. Oh, do you mind if I just have an ice water instead? <laughs> I've uh, since COVID, I've gone sober. So, uh, <laughs> as you, yeah, this is sober, by the way. <laughs> this is sober. <laughs> Could you imagine it? Sober drunk? thoughts, <laughs> sober moments. <laughs> oh my God! Oh man! So yeah, so talk about uh, some of the other things in your life that mm. that uh, you aspire to do. Uh, we got you down for acting. Yeah, you you you're. Read. Uh, <laughs> Fact. <laughs> <laughs> well said, sir. Well said. <laughs> I also <laughs> I also watch things. <laughs> Wait a minute now. Once or twice, I listen to music. This a family program. <laughs> yeah. We got to be sensible now. Oh, no, I'm talking about watching like TV shows. And, oh. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Oh, also, no. we're talking about uh, vibrators. <laughs> 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 this is a, this is a what hyg- kind of, what hygienically kind of, clean what kind of show. Family you? Yeah, I'm a family man. <laughs> this is a family clean show. Well, I'm part of a family, man. Yeah, yeah. You are part of the fabric of oh, this yeah. family. Absolutely, absolutely. So now, how do you find it with uh, learning these these new tricks of the trades behind the camera? How how different is that versus being in front of it? How does that work for you? Uh, shockingly, it's easier. Yeah. Um, and not not to say, let's be clear about this. Uh, it's not easier because what you're learning is easier, but it's it's more tangible. Right. So, so when you're working on a role as an actor, you you know you have to figure out the world they're in. You're right. going to have to figure out who the person is, their entire history, their relationships, and you can never do enough. But you also think you've done enough. And right. then there's also learning the lines and then figuring out how to make it natural, and as if they're actual thoughts. Right. It's. It's ongoing work. There's, there's never a checklist. I'm like, okay, cool. I've done that. Let's move on to something else. You can yeah. maybe make a chess, uh, checklist for the day, yeah. but not, not you, you can't really, like, and you can't really, in a, in a tangible way, say that I've done this and yeah. I don't need to do this again. Yeah. But when you're editing, for instance, right. you might, um, might learn how to cut first off. Cut here, cut there, cut there, put it together. Right. I'm like, great. I, that's, a, that's a new thing I know how to do now. Then you can add a transition, add a title. There, there, there's legitimate steps that you can take and there are things that you can learn and right. you can look at and say this is something i've learned right. with acting man you could do it for 20 years and then still have no idea what you're doing yeah it's like that yes. imposter syndrome yeah so at least i can look at it. i can just, it's a tangible thing that i can say i've learned how to do something what is the the challenges behind capturing what you're trying to capture behind the camera have you mastered that part of the no 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 i've not uh, i'm ultimately it's understanding the story you're telling right um, so say in the sense of photography, you're trying to frame it in a specific way, right? right. Um, so, so like, look right there, right. you see me, yeah. you're in the foreground, right. I'm the subject and the background is the lamp, Okay. right? right. This is, en- this is enough to tell the story. And right. uh, the story right now is the fact that we're in the midst of a podcast, right? We're in the studio. Uh, it's yeah. Right. Yeah. This is nice. And then this, now this is another story. This is a continuation of the same story, but from a different angle and right. the frame itself is, Showing you the room, yeah. You know, um, I mean, there's, I'm sure there's, and then look at you there, yeah. look at you, look how gorgeous you look, right? <laughs> you look ominous. Oh, no, I don't, not yeah. ominous, ominous in a great way. You're <laughs> like, this guy, this guy's got thoughts, yeah. and we can't wait to hear him, yeah. Um, yeah. but but it, but it's setting us up in a specific way so that way, you know, they know who the guest is and they know who the host is, okay. And that's the story we're trying to tell for this, right? Um, and it's just understanding what story to tell. Um, we're not we're not showing you the entire story of seeing what TJ is doing right there, or or how how Nat's uh, dealing with the marketing aspects right there. Our marketer is here. Our marketer's there, absolutely. When she am has I to make you. When am, I, when am I gonna have you on an interview? We tried to do it today, but she said she had never done anything in her life. And she didn't want to be on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's you a, are an artist. You're creating this. You're part of this. You do your makeup every day. <laughs> so um, I'm I'm glad to know that I'm so interesting that five other people get in here. This is yeah. this is mine. Thank you very much. This is my moment. Yes, this is his God. God. Back up, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you're a good man. It's nice to share. <laughs> 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 
can't take the sharing thing to a new level. Uh, uh, talk about uh, some of the challenges you faced uh, more recently with with uh, the COVID hanging over our heads, and and uh, what do you do with your time, dude? I got lost. Yeah, yeah. At the start of COVID. Um, I went through a distinct identity crisis. Yeah. Um, I, I think everybody did, man. Yeah. And that was, and you know, and I, I watched my son go through it. Yeah. He, he's an actor. And, you know, he's an artist. He's a creator of things. And he hasn't learned the skill of, you know, finding that yet, you know. And, uh, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. Just, no, <laughs> yeah. no, no, I'm, I'm intrigued. What, what, yeah, what's... yeah. He just kind of went flatline, you know. He's 15. Yeah, you, you you know, I always told them to have a backup plan, you know, and, you know, kids, they do what they want to do, and they're going to go through it. He's going through changes, you mm -hmm. know, the voice went different, deeper, and, yeah, he, he just kind of caught himself sitting on a computer playing games, you know, Fortnite, and, you know, and, uh, yeah, but uh, we, we've, we've hit him with a bunch of inspiration and trying to get him back out here on the acting uh thing and uh yeah he's worked 13 years at it man right. you know i mean that's a lifetime in yeah. most people's uh, world right now so he's, mm. he's at that stage at 15 he's been in the business since he was three so it's it's kind of hard to watch him but you know it's it's also a learning curve so i mean but for yourself well, as, you know you, you you're an, you, you're a pro at this now so so what's what's you know how's it changed you well just Real quick about your son. If he ever wants, we can do some, you know, shots here. Yeah. Why yeah. not? We'll, Why not? We'll, 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 we'll play. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we'll definitely share. Yeah, yeah totally. Um, <laughs> and the camera. And when you mean for me, it's like the identity crisis, you mean? or Yeah, yeah. Well, he just, you know, he just had that curve, you know. I remember being 15. I didn't know what the heck I wanted to do with my life. You but know? you were sure confident about it, that's for sure. Yeah, I remember, that I was. I remember 15, man. I, I knew everything, but I knew nothing. Oh, no. The more I know, the less I know, and it's well, frustrating. Yeah. I, just, I, just want, I just want to have all the answers again. I just want to know that this is, this is what it is. Well, you know, some of them like to sleep in until 11 in the morning and I never slept in I was always up and going you know <laughs> these kids today they sleep in too late you know and they miss the boat yeah but. These, these, these kids and definitely not me yeah <laughs> now, I've been getting up early you know yeah I got, yeah I got about a nine today I'll have you know hey so, yeah ah. I was up at eight yeah, I guess that qualifies. <laughs> why, 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 he's bragging. Uh, just like, he's yeah, but uh, yeah, man, it, it's just uh, it's it's a different world we're mm. living in right now. And um, some people, I don't know. I ran into this person the other day, and we got to having this argument over COVID. And it was like they wanted to go play in a drum circle, and I'm like, drum circle is a little bit too much for me. I, I'm going to stand back over here, mm -hmm. and uh, they're all in. And, I, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to begrudge anybody of living their lifestyle the way they want to and do what they want to, live how they want. But, you know, there's a point where you just have to be safe, you know, and, and have to kind of use judgment, you know, and uh, good judgment. And I don't know. Is COVID real? Is it real? Is it real? Is it real? Um, good question. Um, I would suggest that anyone who asks me, yeah. Uh, should not ask me because I have not spent years studying uh, science and other forms of, um, I just, I'm not an epidemiologist. Right. Um, as far as I'm concerned, we have these educated people who have, have dedicated their life to this. Yeah. And if they're saying that this is something that we should be concerned by, yeah. then so be it. Okay. Um, do you trust that? Do I trust it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, see, this is I, the mean problem. I mean, I'm keeping myself healthy right. and I'm not doing anything that's going to put me in, a, in an awful situation. I'm also going back and forth from the studio to my home yeah. and occasionally to the beach. Like right. I'm, I'm not really interacting with anyone. Right. I, like I have a very small circle and, and by keeping that way, I'm keeping myself <laughs> safe. I'm not, uh, and now that I'm sober, I'm not necessarily going to bars and getting drunk. So like, it's not as if I'm, I'm, I'm gonna hinder my, uh, my immune system the other night. You were at the bar the other night. I, I, was having, you. I was having a Coke. Uh oh. Yeah. And a smile. And a smile. Okay. Absolutely, oh. absolutely, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think we're gonna look into you. Tomorrow. Yeah, so my so my so my immune system's fine, and I'm and I'm and I'm vegan, so like I'm not I'm not putting I'm not putting any stress onto my body, right. and I'm doing calisthenics, so it's not as if I'm gonna go to the gym and like handling equipment. It's all at home. There you go. So, so as far as I'm concerned, it's not hindered my life that much. Okay. So, 
that's that's it's fine by me and and i can understand the the, the concerns they have and yeah. i'm happy to uh, you know adhere to the rules that they have yeah. uh, th- but it's it's like you know you don't get a doctor of medicine coming up to you and telling you how to act right you know that's not their profession right so i, I think it's kind of foolish uh, to stand and and to pretend as though i know something because i've watched a few youtube episodes yeah or youtube videos so do you think the industry now what, along with this covid thing do you think it's 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 forever changed uh, film industry. Yes. Yeah. Is there going to be new yeah. technology that comes out? I I have a theory. I have a theory that Movie Pass Part Two will come out. Um, so we're gonna conspiracy. No, 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 no. Uh, prophetic moment. Um, so instead of the cinemas being the regular cinema chains they're going to be the studios owning the cinemas or the streaming service. So you're going to have a cinema chain that is owned by Netflix and one by Amazon and, you know, one by Disney and, you know, and so on and so forth. If you have a membership with them, you get a free movie a month. Yeah. Um, and then you have a discounted rate for other movies. And if you can keep going to the movies, you get it cheaper and cheaper. And there are other deals you can get. If you're not, then there's a different price you pay. Okay. Um, and that's going to allow their, I mean, because they have all this money and they're going to need a place to show their films right and it seems as though the cinema chains are getting more and more afraid that that the servers or rather the studios are taking more power away from them um you think we'll have hologram uh auditions going on james dean's gonna be in a movie next year really it's coming out next year or is it sometime this year they're gonna phase him in uh, what are they he's, him he's the lead character no he is the lead yeah no, or lead yeah. actor rather yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, so like it's happening. And there's also, um, uh, there's uh, an AI woman oh, yeah. uh, who has just signed to one of the largest uh, a- agencies in the world uh, based out of the US. And she has got a film That's like, revolving around her. That's interesting. So, yeah. so AI, artificial intelligence, yeah. like she's, what, she just does the voice or they've taken her image? Yeah, they've, they've created an image of this person. And so she's just a, a moving thing. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. So this is the future now. This is what's happening. Apparently so. Brando, funnily enough, said that this was going to be the death of acting. Yes. Uh, when he was doing Superman and they, they scanned his face. Yeah. Uh, for that scene. Yeah. Um, and he's like, this is going to be the end of an era. Wow. Little, so did, little did we know. He started it and ended it. Wow. And, you know, it's, it's I guess the studio saves money that way. It, you know, I guess. Yeah. It, the budget cuts. Well, I, I honestly think that it's going to be the better way to go about it. Um, Do you really? Yeah, yeah. Because there, there are way, way too many chefs cooking right now, right? So the the the, the success of the film is not based on the amount of money it makes, right? But right now it is. So if you make a movie for a hundred million dollars. And it makes three hundred million dollars. Actually, you know what? I know I know an actor who uh, from Australia who was in a big blockbuster movie that was international. It made under half a billion dollars. His career tanked wow. because of that. Wow! It, 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 because because they wanted to make more, but the movie itself was really good. Right. So it shouldn't have been the reason for it. Right. But you know, Cole stopped coming in, and now he's just like, well, "What do I do?" Like I was at the top, and now. You know what is it? What what does he do? Yeah, um, which is it's just a very unfortunate circumstance. But if you have the streaming service or the studios having their own cinemas, yeah, similar to Netflix right now, where they'll have a movie for about two hundred million. The Irishman, two hundred million dollars. Yeah, right. Who knows how much it made? Probably like ten million dollars on, yeah. uh, on uh, when it was in the cinemas. Yeah, but critically, it was loved, and they had a whole bunch of people sitting down to watch the film. It's a three hour movie. Yeah, three and a half hours. People loved it. it. Yeah. Yeah. And it doesn't matter how much the movie made in terms of box office. It matters how people are enjoying the movie and how many people are watching it. Yeah. And that's, that's the barometer that they're, that they're working with. Really? So if you have these cinemas that are owned by these studios okay. where they're not really telling you how much money the movie has made, yeah. but telling you how many people have watched it, mm-hmm. I think that's going to change the scope and how we view the films. It doesn't necessarily have to be success in that sense. Because um, like... Because it doesn't fucking matter. No, it's, it shouldn't be all about the economy. Uh, the economy. Uh, sorry, uh, the economics, economics of it. Um, the, I, I, I was watch. I read something somewhere saying that the film industry is the only industry in the world where people actively campaign. In fact, in their promotions, they highlight how much they've spent on said thing. 
Well, what other industry does that? You don't get Coca Cola telling you how much they manufactured Coke for? Yeah, jeez. Right. Arm and a leg. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, potentially so. <laughs> like, it just it just seems silly that that um you you know they're trying to say it's artistic yet they're consistently throwing out the like this the capitalist price idea. Yeah, the price on it. Don't 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 put a price on the artistry. Yeah, those were the old days. Truly, now, the studios are all about can it make us money? And do you feel like a part of the art is lost in that, or the the, the yeah. message or the essence of a film is lost behind trying to make Absolutely. too much money? Absolutely. I mean, you look at the, what is it, Terminator? It is not Terminator. Transformers. One of them. They they filmed this entire section in china right right um not because it was useful just because they'll get chinese audiences if they put it in there right which i think is patronizing to the chinese people okay if you want to if you want to you know if you, if you want to earn their dollars yeah how about you tell a story they care about yeah uh you look at say the female ghostbusters stupid yeah um women deserve their own stories yeah. don't just like don't just like shoehorn another series that that has ended twenty years ago or right. thirty years ago and put uh, women in there or people of color in there so that way you can get their money. Well, Fuck there you go. that. Tell mm. tell a story that actually matters. Yeah. It's just being lazy it because is. they think that there's a there's a set in um, audience. Yeah. Stupid people. Yeah. No. Stupid people I, I with agree. a lot of power and money. I agree. I agree. And uh, yeah. So now this is my final question about Please. all this about Vancouver. Mm. How, how do you feel about the industry here in Vancouver. Disillusioned. Yeah. Disillusioned, yeah. Okay. But, I mean, I was disillusioned because I realized for the first time in my life that I'm not a person. I, I had a meeting with an agent when I first arrived. Yeah. And I, I, I swear to you, she was foaming at the edge of her lips <laughs> because she was like, oh, you're going to get so much work, so many auditions. <laughs> Like, fuck you. Yeah. How dare you? Like, no, I, I, so, I mean, I, I, I mean, I get it. That's you. what you want to hear when you're sitting down there. But, but like, but, but to say, because of your look, you're going to get it. Yeah. Well, the that's color just of your insulting. Skin. Oh yeah. How, how, how I about, used to get the, uh, you're black. Oh, we got so many roles for you here. Yeah. No, it's, cool. it's insulting. Like, cause, yeah. cause you can't do anything about the fact that you're black. No. What you can do is about your skill and the talent that you have, that's which right. is what you've supported. That's right. And so it's really frustrating. That's and right. then, and through this whole COVID era, I went through this identity crisis I was talking about. Yeah. And- um, They're and coming I, to get you, by the way. Oh, fucking, of course. <laughs> fucking, I'm not a terrorist. I just look like one. God. <laughs> uh, we have to go out the back exit. <laughs> Thank you for watching them. Oh, shit. <laughs> um, uh, so I, I, I just like had this time to sit down and really look at myself. Yeah. And I realized that I have, for my entire upbringing, hated the way I look because but, this was not the look that showed success. This is not the face that that was exemplary of what a good person was. Right. It was either the bad person on screens or non-existent. And so I, I had a real tough time right. looking at this and I didn't realize that. And, and I looked at all my old photos and all my old work and my look was completely white. Yeah. Um, you, you know, I, 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 I fit the image of what society wanted me to look like so that way I can be it. It's palatable or ethically diverse. Fuck that. No. I, and like, I, I, lost, I lost the essence of who I am and I became an artist because I want to pursue my own thoughts, my feelings. My, I want to explore the depths of humanity from, from the reaches of my own fingers. And yet there I am pushing towards this idea that, that this, this fuckwit behind a screen knows exactly what I'm meant to be. Wow. Do I want, why should I fight for that? I would rather have nothing because guess what? I have nothing. I would rather have nothing and still have my own integrity than be able to tell somebody I'm in the show for like five minutes. Yeah, I'm the waiter. Yeah, I'm a waiter in life. Yeah, I know it's funny, but I got paid more for it. <laughs> well, my friend, it has been a absolute pleasure. Um, where are we at? How are we doing? Um, I'm pretty sure we're in Vancouver. <laughs> is that? Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. It is... Um, been a real pleasure though 
being here with you and talking with you and finding out all these little things that I didn't know about you as a person, but it's, it's really wonderful. And I'm an angry person, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, just slightly. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, yeah, man, it's, it's a groovy. Will you come back and do this again with me? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I, I you know, I might blacklist you in the show <laughs> because there are a lot of people like, Oh, he was talking about me. If but you think that I was, I was definitely talking about you. Yeah. Chris, thank you, brother. Absolute pleasure, man. Thanks for having me. Thank you.